Hey, this is Jason with 4W Knives. I'm going to do a quick video today, and it's going to involve the use of this, what I'm hoping and believe is wrought iron. Uh, I was gifted this from a cousin that lives in Nebraska, Chad. Uh, Chad's always been super good to me, and he sent this to me, or actually gave it to me last year on a visit. And I'm going to take it, pair it with some uh, high carbon steel, and make a little EVC, lightweight EVC, something easy to carry and see. And if by chance it's not rod, rod iron, uh, it'll be a mild steel and it'll still make a good contrast for a San Mai. So uh, hoping this will get me out of a little bit of a funk that I've been in. I haven't felt like doing much uh, out here. So I needed something just different. I've, I've got a few projects that I'm finishing uh, for people. Uh, but I've just just been been stagnant, so uh, nothing helps more than kind of a, a little bit of a spark of creativity, hopefully. So, uh, anyways, I appreciate you watching, and I hope you stick with it till the end. Uh, see what we can make out of uh, this little chunk of steel. So, see. Ya. Okay, first thing I need to do is take this wrought iron and make it into a billet form. I'll do that by getting it hot and pressing it out on the log splitter press. I want to get it flat and as wide as possible. All right, I have the wrought iron smashed out and cut into lengths. These are five and a half inches long. Uh, and I've got the 1095 high carbon steel in the middle. So, uh, before I do this, I'm going to have to take it and grind the high carbon steel down to meet that. Any leftover could cause problems in the forge weld. So I'm going to do that uh, off camera, of course. So I'm going to tack this with a welder, uh, grind off this part. And then the next part you'll see is me putting it in the forge uh, to get good and hot and uh, get our forge weld set. So here we go. Just a couple of little hints or tricks that I found that helped me on my forge welding. Uh, I'll put it in the forge. Uh, after, of course, it's got to be clean of all debris, all dirt. Uh, use acetone, all of that. Uh, I like to use WD-40 on my billet once I've got it welded together. And I'll heat it up to a uh, almost a dull red, uh, just pretty hot. And I will go ahead and put some flux on it which this is just the uh, laundry detergent that you can buy. I think it's Mule Team 64 or something like that. Uh, but I'll do that. This does a couple of things. One, it let make sure that it's all heating at the same time. The outer edges will heat faster than the core. This allows it a chance to cool down uh, and it also burns out any oxygen. So then you put it back in, let it get back up to the forge welding temperatures and the best way I can describe that is it's pretty hot. Um, it's around 2000 degrees is what you'd like. Uh, it's a glowing, almost looks like it's on fire, a uh, melting stick of butter. I've heard a lot of different deals. I like to first take it and do a light press, and then I will up my presses each time with how hard I'm pushing. Once I get the uh, billet forge welded together and to the width that I want, I'll take it to my roller mill. Uh, the roller mill is uh, one of my favorite machines that I've got. Uh, it gives me good control and I can get it to a longer length without widening it. Uh, it just gives me more control of it, I think is what I like. And it's easy on the body. Uh, I do have a video on this if you wanna go back and check that out. Uh, but I'll just keep working this. Uh, tightening it as it goes and just keep getting it thinner and longer and once I get it to the right length or thickness is really what I'm shooting for uh, I'll take it over to the uh, anvil and I'll go ahead and press it down get it flat and then I will prep it to start making a knife out of it.
Okay, got it all drawn out, uh, ready to go. I just sketched this together really quick. Got a skinner that I've made before, uh, that's similar to that. Uh, but I thought with this little sheep's foot type edge on it, I thought it would just give it a little different look. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, but I'm gonna do stock removal, which is basically just tracing an image or drawing an image uh, onto your steel and then either grinding it out or cutting it out with a cutoff wheel or bandsaw or something like that. Um, I'm gonna use a cutoff wheel and then the grinder uh, to get the shape out of it. Uh, and I'm doing this again, I, if you saw my last video, I did a sand mine and that's basically what this is, is wrought iron sand mine. It's really hard to keep the uh, core centered when you forge it so on this one i'm just going to play it safe and do it this way and then i plan on using the rest of this billet and i will do some knife i don't know what type or anything but i'll do a knife on this to where i hand forge it out even though it is a sand mine uh, just to practice on my on my skills i guess so anyways that's what we got that's what we're shooting for All right, here we are. I've lightly surface ground it just to get it uh, pretty smooth. Um, it's even, so I'm gonna go ahead and first I'm going to mark my center line with my handy little gadget that I've got from Jantz. This just makes sure that the bevels are even on both sides. So I've got the center line and then I need to get my uh, how high up my bevels I wanna go. So I'm just gonna use this, just cheap Harbor Freight one. And I'm just gonna scratch it in. Oops, didn't do a very good job of that. There, that first one wasn't right. So it's kinda of messed up, but you get the point. I'll do the same on this side. And then just for my sake, I always come back in with a marker. And just put a little bit there just so I can make sure I'm staying on course. It's not being very cooperative today. All right, I'll even that up later anyways, so. Okay, so I'm almost done with the rough grind. Uh, I've got the bevels about where I want them. Uh, so then I'll take it over and do three thermal cycles where I'll heat it up to critical temp, let it cool slowly. And then believe it or not, I caught the quench on this video. I've missed the last three or four, just kept forgetting. Finally got to see a little bit of fire. Um, after the quench, 
Uh, it's taken and soak it in the oven at 400 degrees for two hours. And then I head back to the 2x72 and do some finished grinding. Uh, I start off with a 120 and then go to a 220 Trizac, uh, 400, and then I go to a, a green conditioning belt. Uh, conditioning belts help quite a bit on uh, avoiding having to do any hand sanding, uh, which on this blade I did end up doing quite a bit, that, uh, but it wasn't bad. The, the, I guess the wrought iron uh, was pretty soft. And, and it took a pretty good sanding. Uh, turned out uh, pretty decent, I think. Off camera, I glued it up, and here you see me doing my shaping and uh, overall contouring of the handle. I went with black G10. I don't remember how thick it was, but it wasn't very thick. I wanted a small, uh, comfortable handle and uh, ended up getting that. That's the one thing that really turned out well, I think, is this black G10 uh, turned out good and extremely comfortable. Uh, so you see, I just go through the different uh, attachments that I have for my 2x72s from the uh, flat platen to the big wheel to the little wheel and then I've been using these little one inch wheel uh, belts rather and they are great for contouring. Uh, really have liked using these and again I, I felt like the handle turned out really well on this. Alright, after some hand sanding and some buffing got this little dude done. Uh, pretty pleased with it. Uh, really like the uh, that look of that wrought iron. Uh, there were a couple of things I didn't care for. You can see on this side of the blade, uh, went one too many ro uh, trips on the roller mill, got a little too thin. I wasn't able to grind out all the divots. Uh, but other than that, it turned out well. It's not going to affect the functionality of the knife. It's just going to give it a little bit of character, we'll say. Uh, core was centered. It looks good. Uh, I'll do wrought iron again. Uh, next time I'll leave it thicker so I can grind it down a little bit more uh, so I can show a little bit more of the core. I think a little wrought iron is nice, a little too much is too much, uh, as you can see on this. But I think it's gonna make a good knife. I'll end up making a sheath for it and uh, hopefully get this little to do to home. I appreciate you watching. And as always, you can find me on Facebook at 4W Knives. Uh, thanks again for watching. If you haven't, liked and sub uh, subscribe. Uh, I'd like to build this channel up a little bit. Thanks.